Hello. Hi, I'm uh, Austin Chang from Ginkgo Fireworks. Um, so I want to propose to uh, take some of the principles of test-driven uh, development, which comes from agile software uh, pro engineering, and applying them to biological engineering. Now, a lot of typical uh, biological engineering projects go through a cycle of build, design, test. That is, the testing comes last. Test-driven development emphasizes that the testing should come first, that really it should be a test, build, design loop. And the reason that testing coming in first um, provides a lot of benefits is that the design can then be focused on exactly what it is that uh, you're, you're trying to test. So to give an example, a uh, typical experiment I see, you want to try to find an enzyme that has a certain activity, so you go, you make a list of potential enzymes or organisms, you screen them, you see which has activity, you try to mutate it, you try to increase the activity, you keep doing your fancy algorithms or whatever you have, and you keep making it better until you get bored, and then you publish and you say you're success. But the level that you res that you get in the final uh, result is that is that what you intended to achieve? Like you didn't have a metric about success before you started, and so the idea from test driven development is that you should specify the test beforehand, have a clear metric of, of what it is, and then try to meet that goal. I think there are basically two kinds of tests that we can specify for biological systems. There's design tests. These would be like software tests. So if you take, for example, Howard Salas's uh, RBS calculator, you can imagine designing a test that that took an RBS component and, and ensured that the strength of that RBS was at a certain level within a certain range, and if it is, then the test passes, otherwise it fails. Biology is not so great that we can simulate everything in software, so I, there's probably also going to be system tests where you actually have to deal with the real life system, and you have to actually build it and test it in the, in the full environment, and so I'm calling those system tests. And so with both of these tests, the idea is to build individual small pieces, small tests, which then you can, the first step is to just run the test and make sure it fails without having done anything, any design or, or building. The purpose of this is you can imagine, you can, you can just consider this the negative control. This is testing the test, making sure that your test is actually testing what you think it's testing, that it, if, if the test passes without you having done anything, then either the test is invalid or it's redundant. Your, your system already does what you need it to do. And then you can go through the design, try to make the test pass, and build it and test again. If it, if it passes, great. If not, then you go through the loop and redesign and, and keep on going until, until it does pass. The advantage of, of being able to do this then is if you can make the test automatable, then you can, and, and very easy to do, then each time through the loop, you can make sure that you don't make changes that, that, um, that break things that used to work. So for example, you, you get your perfect RBS at the perfect strength, and then some time passes, someone else in the lab, figured out the downstream gene, a much better replacement for it, but, but doesn't realize that it also affects the RBS strength. But if you had this automated test, then it would say, oh, well, look, dummy, your, your, your RBS is now different, it's no longer in spec, uh, you need to redesign the entire system. The, the, I think another key uh, advantage for having well-specified tests is then you can have a sep separation between who's doing the test and the designer. So you can already outsource synthesis. So you can uh, have a DNA synthesis company synthesize your genes and they will even do some design for you. You can tell them what restriction enzymes you want them to avoid. So imagine if you could also send them your little you know, RBS calculator black box test that says this test must pass in your codon optimization. So you can op optimize your gene however you want, but I want this test to pass. Similarly, you can imagine outsourcing generic testing facility where you send someone a strain and the, the test that you want and they tell you pass or fail. So in summary, I think test-driven development emphasizes specification. It allows us to specify exactly what is important, what is not. Most importantly, it, it, um, it, it, provides, it provides during the design process a, a framework for what it is that you're trying to build. It emphasizes that you should not be designing stuff that's not testable. So designing for testability, I think, is ex extremely Im important. Um, and, I, and I think that we basically have everything uh, we need to basically uh, implement everything that I talked about immediately. Uh, and I think there's a lot of potential uh, upsides to focusing first on the test and then the design and build. Thank you.